second question, how often you be having these outbreaks like? How often? Yeah. Now, they're not like, they're not a regular thing. Nah, nah, not nah, at all. Not at all. I mean, before I was having them like every two, three weeks. When was your last one? Like, mm, two months ago. That means you'd be like on top of your diet and shit. Yeah. Mm hmm on top of my medication and all that. As you should be, as you should be. That was, that was really good for me, that's yeah. it. If I want to be on top of one thing, I got to be on top of the other. I'm, a, um, I'm, a, I'm staying. So you said the longer you have it. The less likely they are to spread it, yeah. It don't slow, the, slow it down? It do. With people who have it, they're more like contagious whenever they first get it because they don't know that they have it, first of all. So a lot of people think that the they get, some people have really minor outbreaks, so that look like an angron. I hope you ready for them. Ready as I ever be. I got one question though, before we even get to that. Hmm. Before, you know what I'm saying, the little incident, did you know like uh, it's a higher percentage like everybody can have like have this but not contract that. yeah my best friend caught it whenever we were kids and so like like 15 and so i did my research around then and that was her second body and so i racked up bodies on bodies on bodies i ain't to my bodies though i'm talking about like did you know like if you get chicken pox or some shit like this you can rub on somebody and get that shit. it's considered you know what i'm saying hsv yeah you knew that i knew that yeah I was already aware. I just didn't know what the f the bitches look like. Eczema, chicken pox, ringworm. I didn't. I didn't even know the ringworm. Shit. That shit was wild. Cause they said that like you could just kick a puddle and then that bitch could go in your toe or some shit. I didn't know that that shit was herpes. Anything dealing with your skin, bro. Yeah, that's just just like eczema. That shit was wild. Now I just got crazy eczema. All right, let me get the first guy, bro. Welcome back. Hey again. You did your research. They was talking about it the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so we finally have a truthful one. Yeah, they was talking about it for a little minute. So yeah. Let me give a hug. You give a hug? Yeah. Because they acting like you got older or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not that serious, you know what I'm saying? So you're educated on it? Yeah, of course. How old are you? I'm 20. Yeah, see, I'm a little older, so. How old are you? 24. Oh, yeah. Most of the men that I'm, I deal with now are, like, older because mm -hmm. they, they've been around. They, they yeah. know the game. Is acting like you got it. I ain't gonna lie, they didn't want to touch you type shit. So, so I was like, I'm gonna give you a hug because you're a victim, you feel me? Yeah. Oh, I so, appreciate that. Uh, yeah. Nice meeting you, though. What's your, your name? Is your name? Yeah. For sure, for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I like your hair and shit. Thank you. So, where you from? I'm from Florida. Florida? Palm Beach, Florida. Palm Beach? Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm trying to win this shit, so you feel me? I'll just see you next round then. Yeah. That's cool. Okay, you don't have no other questions? You got a question for me? No. No. No, I pretty much asked them earlier. I might have another question later. That's the next round. I love that. I love that you are compassionate. A lot of people just think that I'm like uh, overly diseased and overly contagious. Like yeah. if I just breathe around them, they catch these, which yeah. But if you come up positive for these, it was not me. All right. So if you if if you went on a date with her, you know what I'm saying, and she told you, would you accept her still? Yeah. I mean, if she said like straight off the bat, like. Know what I'm saying? Nah, that kind of gives off like, oh yeah, I'm finna let you beat my doonies down. I'm saying like if y'all vibing. Nah, if we vibing, yeah, I'm, you know what I'm saying? And then she like, be like, I gotta tell you something. Shit, sex ain't everything for real to me, you feel me? So, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I can still have sex. I can still have raw sex. Yeah, I can still do all of that. It's literally based on outbreaks. Like, you gotta have outbreak or you have to just be healthy and you don't pass it. And also, I learned something recently. The longer you have it, the less contagious you are. So mm. like... People that had it for like 10, 20 years, they mm -hmm. are less likely to even fucking pass that. Oh, type shit. Yeah, we good then. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna stay. Yeah, I'm gonna stay. Right, man. Watch everybody drop like flies. <laughs> I'll see you next round. Thank you. Right. Like him. Shalom. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Kodash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone because those are the men who I learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh is the true name of the God of Israel. Yahweh Shai is who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, but his one and only true name is Yahweh Shai. And pretty much, um, you know, you have like a series of YouTube channels. They got like these little events for entertainment that they be hosting like pop the balloon they'll have like a, a famous celebrity and then i'll have like 20 women compete you know to hang out with the celebrity maybe they win like a prize at the end but in this case it's the other way around and now check this out right now the woman that you saw in the clip she has herpes and she's currently going viral 
because she was dealing with this other dude that, um, you know, he's like an entertainer, Jake. I think the dude is Nigerian or, or whatever. You know, I didn't see the actual, like, clip or nothing like that, but I heard about it. And she's going viral because she actually caught herpes from the dude, right? But what really inspired me to do this video is the fact that she's open about it. Like, she's open about it. She's letting you know, look, I got herpes. And she's saying it like it's not a big deal. Like, yeah, I can still have raw sex. You know, the herpes, that's not going to slow me down. And you would think any man in his right frame of mind, why the fuck would you want a bitch that has herpes, bro? Like, that's going to destroy your health. You know, that's going to mess with your rod down there. You're going to have to deal with, you know, lifetime pain. Like, herpes, that ain't nothing to play around with. That's not something you could just get rid of. But these men, they put a woman on a pedestal and they stumble at the beauty of a woman to where their own health don't even matter. They'll catch herpes just because, oh, she looks good. She has a fat ass. Oh, man. You know, look at her chest. Look at her body. Never mind themselves and their health. So... This is why, you know, the most high concern the laws of adultery, the land becoming polluted. This is why when people committed adultery, whether there was a man or a woman, they had to get put to death because those type of examples that was spread around and defile the people. Now people start to get curious. Oh, maybe if I sneak around, you know, nobody can't see me. But what does the scripture say? In Sirach 23 and 19, that the eyes of the heavenly father, Yahweh, are in every place beholding good and evil. And that is 10 times, is 10,000 times brighter than the sun, right? So even parts where the sun can't shine, the most high can see everything. He knows everything about us, the secret sins, things you don't tell people. Because that's what you currently have going on. You have women with multiple sleeping partners, and that produces these STDs, which, by the way, in this lesson, I'm going to show you that herpes, that was something that was very common in ancient Egypt. Just to seal the deal that America is spiritually called Sodom in Egypt. So you just have a lot of women out here just committing adultery, acting like harlots, and they're spreading STDs. And see, this is what happens when you don't have the law, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, implemented throughout the whole planet Earth. Now everybody's a swinger. Now everybody's just committing adultery. Now STDs are rampant. Now people don't fear the Lord. They don't see, they don't see the big deal having multiple sleeping partners. Oh, because this is how it makes me feel. This is what I want to do. Oh, this person ain't being punished for committing adultery. Oh, they're getting rich. They're an adult entertainer. Nothing bad is not happening to them. Oh, they living their best life. Oh, let me try to be like that. So that's what's going on. And you could blame the Edomites for that, right? So let's get into the lesson. Now, let me show you that herpes was in ancient Egypt. Now, this is Deuteronomy chapter 28. And I'm going to start at verse 15 so we can get a quick backstory. Because in order for you to identify who the Israelites are today, you will be able to understand who they are based off of their living conditions, based off of their history, right? Which ultimately is only found in the scriptures. Now, when you read Deuteronomy chapter 28, this is dealing with the consequences of disobedience, us breaking the law, statutes, and commandments. The consequence of that is what? These curses from verses 16 through 68 is upon the seed line of Israel. We know that men carry the seed. The seed is the sperm. The man puts his seeds, right, or, or sperm within the woman. It grows within the woman, and she conceives that man's seed. So your nationality is determined by the seed of your father, all right? Deuteronomy 28 and 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of Yahweh thy God. Now, whenever you see the word Lord in caps, it's the name Yahweh. That's how you know that Yahweh and Yahweh Shai are two separate entities. Because when it's referring to Yahweh, his name is in caps. When it's referring to Yahweh Shai, his name is not in caps. 
All right? Yahweh thy God to observe, to do all his commandments. Because what is a commandment? A commandment is a divine rule from the Heavenly Father. And when you break these divine rules that the Heavenly Father gave us, which is a commandment, right? Then this is what happens. Everything you see in the world, all right? Everything is just out of order. STDs all over the place. Women being whores. Men being sodomites. Because there ain't no fear of the Lord in this land. So these different STDs, that's judgment from the Lord. All right. So it says to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now, let's just get to the point in verse 59. Right. Now, this is Deuteronomy chapter 28. I'm going to start at 58. Deuteronomy 28 and 58. If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God, which is interpreted as Yahweh, our God, right? Then the Lord, right, Yahweh, will make thy plagues wonderful, and the plagues of thy seed even great plagues, and of long continuance, and sore sicknesses, and of long continuance. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou was afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord, Yahweh, bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. Because black culture is a deaf culture. What does that consist of? Women ruling over men. Women having male friends. Women having a bunch of sleeping partners. Men making R&B songs and, and, and diss tracks about dissing people, dead relatives and dead friends and singing about how, you know, he'll F somebody wife. You know, it's just, it's disgusting. It's, it's, it's disgusting, man. It pisses the heavenly father off. You know, um, yet I be evil towards thy brother, right? Deuteronomy 28 and 54, the verses above, which explains so-called black on black crime, you know, Hispanic on black crime, so forth and so on, right? That's that's what black culture consists of, a deaf culture, something that's void of light. What's the light? The law, statutes, and commandments. So in these different songs and the way how people is portrayed in the media, they're acting like pagans, all right? They're in the Gentile state of mind, and they don't want to repent. So the Lord is going to end up destroying them, all right? So um, let me read that again. This is Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 61. It says, And every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, then will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. So that's that's pretty much it. Now, let me show you this, right? So I went on Google and I typed in herpes in ancient Egypt. This is the AI overview from the Google search results, right? It says, yes, evidence suggests that herpes was present in ancient Egypt. There you go. It says, um, ancient medical literature, modern interpretations of ancient medical literature suggest that Genital herpes was a sexually transmitted disease, STD, in ancient Egypt. It says Egyptian papari, right? It says from ancient Egypt, provide evidence of STDs, including herpes genitals, right? All right. So, I mean, that's, that's the point. Herpes is one of the diseases that was in ancient Egypt. You know, just to prove when you read Revelation 11 and 8, that America, the great city, is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. So all the things that was going on in ancient Egyptian society that's going on here in America, all right, from the wigs, you know, the um, all the customs, right, sodomy, so forth and so on. You had women protests in ancient Egypt, right, because they believed in equality back then. So the same things is going on here in Babylon the Great, America. Now, this is a rock known as the book of Ecclesiasticus 25 and 21. It says, stumble not at the beauty of a woman. 
You don't want to stumble at the beauty of a woman because a woman can destroy your life. All right. So-called one night stands that could lead to a woman getting a check out of you for the next 18 to 21 years of your life because you made a, a poor decision. You were stumbling at her beauty or her ass is fat. In this case, you'll think that this woman looked good. You know, y'all go out for drinks, but you have women that's, um, you know, devious, they evil, they malicious. They won't even tell you that they got an STD. So you have a lot of men that queen of heaven worship. They put woman on a pedestal, right? And that woman, she'll give you herpes. She'll give you an STD. She'll give you chlamydia, gonorrhea. She'll give you HIV. Bitch probably give you AIDS, all type of nasty shit that's out here. That's why you got to be careful. And all these STDs is what? Divine judgment from the heavenly father. It's a consequence for what? Adultery. All right. So you got to be careful out here. You know, that one night stand, that could lead to you getting herpes. That could lead to what? A, a child, you know, coming forth, which children are a blessing. But these women, they will weaponize the court system and use this system to oppress you. So you got to be careful out here. All right. Especially men that have the wisdom. So this is Ecclesiastes 25 and 21. It says, stumble not at the beauty of of a woman and desire her not for pleasure. Yeah, you have to vet these women out. All right. It's not wrong with asking questions. You can't just be laying up with any woman and just getting any woman pregnant. You got to be careful out here. You got to know, you know, who you living with. This woman, she has to earn her spot as being your wife. All right. And she has to stay consistent. See, in a lot of these relationships, the man is the servant. Oh, I got to please my wife. I got to work all these excessive hours. You know, happy wife, happy life. You know, what about the man? The man that's busting his ass, that's doing absolutely everything. Oh, because you cook, you clean. How can you be an asset to this man's life? How can you be a help me? How can you aid this man in a time of distress? Because most of these women that are, that are career driven, right? They're so-called Miss Independent. They're selfish with their resources. They're selfish with their wealth. They won't share that wealth with the man. The man's income and his money is for the family, including her and himself. But her money is just her money. She could just spend it as she want. She could just go out with her home girls, have girls night out. She's just free to do whatever the hell she wants to do. And it ain't supposed to be like that. All right. So especially if you are a brother that's in this truth, if you got a woman that's not aiding you in a time of distress, all she does is just nag. She don't help you out, you know, when you down and out. But when she's down and out, she come to you crying. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. And then, you know, you through your habashah, you're able to deliver her out of whatever problems because that's going to affect the household. You know, when a woman is going through it, right, women crack under pressure. And, and ultimately, they're followers. So they need somebody to lead them the right way. But see, what happens is a lot of these women, they're untamable. They don't want to be controlled, right? So you got to be careful with these women out here. Don't even waste your time with them. So that's it with that, right? Let's go here because you got to understand the so-called dating market today, all right? We, this ain't the ancient world. We're not dealing with virgins, all right. We, we're dealing with whores. We're dealing with prostitutes. We're dealing with whores that think they're equal to us. All right. This is Amos 7 and 17. It says, therefore, thus saith the Lord, thy wife shall be a harlot in the city. Now, what makes a woman a harlot? What makes a woman a harlot is that, first of all, when you're born, you're a virgin. Right now. When a woman loses her virginity to that first man she has sex with, according to the laws of the heavenly father, she's supposed to stay bound to that man unto death. All right. He's not supposed to put her away because that's his woman. That's his virgin. He took her virginity. He paid the father, you know, the dowry according to the law. You know, he had the ceremony. They went into the bed, the bed chamber to consummate the marriage. Right. 
He had the token of the virginity. He would bring it to the elders of Jerusalem. Right? That's how it was in the ancient world. See, we're not living like that. See, now we're under grace. Right? But we're supposed to reflect back on these laws. Because all the problems that men is going through today, the reason why we catch so much hell is because the laws of the heavenly father is not in effect in the land. So now we got to live like pagans. We got to date like pagans. Right? When I say pagans, I'm talking about like the Gentile nations. We, we got to pretty much live like how they live now. Right? So that's what makes a woman a harlot. When she has sex with that second man while her husband is still alive. All right? You got a lot of women, they like to end relationships. They like to walk out on a man and go deal with other men. That's adultery. That's, that's a sins unto death. And that's what these women glory in. All right? Oh, this guy, I got this guy for Sunday. I got another guy for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. This guy pays the bills. This guy is broke, but he laid on the pipe good. That's how these women act. This, this is what you're going to be dealing with. You're going to be dealing with damaged goods for the most part. That's why you got to be careful. Because the scriptures tell you that what? That a woman's heart is snares and nets. Especially when you're dealing with a prostitute. Because another word for harlot is prostitute. A prostitute, she only cares about money. She's going to be on that strip. She's going to be on the street. And she's going to make that dollar amount that she came outside for. Even if it's 12 hours. Even if it takes two, three days. So that's how the average woman thinks. She only cares about her career. All right? She ain't thinking about no man because her mother didn't care about no man. Why you think a lot of, you know, um, you know, women or just people in general, they don't know who their dad is, right? That's that's because of the woman. Now, I'm going to read this again. Amos 7, 17. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, thy wife shall be a harlot in the city, Right? Because we're not dealing with virgins. We're, we're dealing with harlots. But Yahabashah said that some of these harlots is going to make it into the kingdom. Why? Because they're going to repent and they're going to serve their husband at the time. Right? It says, And thy sons and thy daughters shall fall by the sword, and thy land shall be divided by line. That's what's going on today. Our land is divided by the heathen nations. It says, and thou shalt die in a polluted land. America is that polluted land. All right? It's nothing but STDs here. People committing adultery left and right. It says, And Israel shall surely go into captivity forth of his land. And that happens several times. Right? Now, let's read this. This is Jeremiah, the third chapter, verse 1. And this is dealing with what? The polluted land. It says, Jeremiah 31. They say if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? And the answer is no. When you read Deuteronomy 24th chapter, it goes into divorce. Now, if a man divorce a woman for whatever particular reason, he cannot remarry her according to the law. That's, that's what's written in the law. But see, you got men in this society, the woman commit adultery on them, right? They commit infidelity. You know, they cheat just to dumb it down for you. Then you got men that don't even say dumb shit like this out their mouth. They'll say, oh, well, we, we the most high woman. The most high forgave us. So we got to forgive the woman <laughs> that opened up her legs to another man. Like, you hear how stupid that sound? That sound crazy. And I don't, I don't mean to, you know, you know, I'm a little lively, but... I'm just saying, that shit is stupid. Like, anybody, any Israelite man that believes in that shit, you need to reevaluate your spirit, man. Because ain't no fucking way in hell you supposed to forgive a woman for committing adultery on you. You sound pathetic. You sound like a weakling. If you think like that, something is wrong with you. You need to examine yourself, whether you be in the faith. Because that's the ultimate form of betrayal. Look at two-thirds of the nation of Israel. All right? They worship in idols. They worship in the God of this world, which is saying that his physical counterpart, the so-called white man, the sea lion, the Edomites, right? The Most High is still going to destroy them, even though they're going to come back, you know, in the kingdom under that new covenant. But they still got to be destroyed on the side. All right. But the point is, if a woman commit adultery on you, you should never forgive her. 
You you should immediately cut ties with her before worse of things happen. If you catch what I'm really saying. Because if she do it again, she if she do that one time to you, she could do it again. It's going to keep happening. Why, why would you want to put yourself in that world of hurt like that? It's going to keep on happening. She don't respect you. She's a demon. She don't need to be trusted. She already broke your trust. She already committed the ultimate form of betrayal on you. And you, you having hope in a woman that clearly don't love you? Like, like, what's wrong with some of you dudes, man? Like, you, you just addicted to just being hurt? Like, you, you like that? Oh, well, I got hope. You know, I know her. I know her deep down inside, you know, she could come back around. You sound pathetic, all right? You should never forgive no woman that commit adultery on you. That, sh that shit is crazy. Anyways, Jeremiah 3 and 1. It says, they say if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's, right? See, this is what's going on in society today. It says, shall he, shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? And that's what's going on. This land, America, is greatly polluted. It's sexually transmitted diseases everywhere, all right? You thinking, oh, man, this woman look good. The chemistry is on point. She natural. You know, she, she check off all my, my boxes, right? Concerning men's standards. Then, <laughs> you, little do you know, the chick got an STD. And then a lot of these women, they won't even tell you that they got a man. All right? You, you just got to find out the hard way. You know, they try to hide their phone. You know, put the phone on the opposite side. They got the passcode on the phone. Right? So you, you just got to be careful. Because a woman will put a man in a life or death situation. Whether it's health whether it's life or death situation concerning the other men that she's lying to, and then they get mad when they kill you. Because you know how these men are for the most part, all right? The, the westernized man, the average man, right? Women commit adultery in most cases. They're not going to want to punish the woman. They're going to want to kill whoever slept with her. Meanwhile, she's going to keep doing it behind their back, but they just want to punish the man. And see, this is why the Most High, he's going to destroy more women than men in the times to come concerning Jacob's trouble. Because there's more women than men because technically men is supposed to have multiple wives. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But see, according to Esau's system, you know, that's that's against the um, his laws. You know, they, they quote unquote ban polygamy or polygamous relationships. All right. Where a man can have more than one woman unless he's like Muslim or something. All right. I'm going to read it again. Jeremiah chapter three, verse one. It says, they say if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? So the land of America is greatly polluted. Back then, it was talking about the land of Israel, all the wickedness we was doing in the land. Right. Because if somebody does something wicked and people hear about it and those individuals are not judged, now people think it's okay to be like that. So America is a polluted land. There's all type of, you know, freakish activity that's going on in society. All kind of things. All different categories you can think of. All right. So it says, shall not that land be greatly polluted. So the most High is going to judge you, woman. You don't want to be accountable for your actions. You love being wicked. It's your body, your choice. You don't want to be led, even though you was created to be a follower of your man. You don't want to be a helpmate. You think men are, are servants. All right. Let's, let's see how tough you are during this economic collapse, when it really starts to pick up, when inflation becomes hyperinflation, when this migrant crisis really gets even more out of control, when, when the government comes down on great wrath, when there's a cyber attack, and the lights out situation happens. That's see how tough you are when there is no 911. Because anytime a woman is in trouble, she needs other men to protect her. Whether it's her brother, her uncle, her father, right? Male friends, co uh, co-workers. She needs another man to defend her against other men. Because she can't do it herself. So we're going to see how tough these women really are when that time comes. You masculine-ass Israelite woman. You're doing car lessons. You got your man 
reading the scriptures. He's your reader and, and you the speaker. The most high is going to destroy you, man. So reading on, it says, but thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. That's what our people did. They committed fornication, which is the breaking of the law, statutes and commandments. Right. It says with many lovers, right, the philosophies and customs of the heathen, worshiping the heathen gods, yet return again to me, saith the Lord. And we're doing that through Yahabashah's blood and sacrifice. All right. So now I'm going to just end it with this. This is Proverbs 30 and verse 20. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth and wipeth her mouth and say and saith, I have done no wickedness. So you got a woman on YouTube with their face showing, telling you, oh, I got HIV this, I got herpes this, I got this STD, I did this, I cheated, I did that, this is how I felt, this is why I did that, right? And they don't fear the Lord, and society just accepts them. Oh, thank you for being honest. You got young, young men. Lining up for a woman that got herpes. She has absolutely no value at all. All right. She has absolutely no value at all. But these men are still lining up. Why? Because they're stumbling at the beauty of a woman. And that's going to lead to a lot of Ben's destruction. All right. So, you know, that's that's the point. You know, Lord willing, you was edified by the lesson. Shalom.